Welcome to today's show. I'm John Hussa, the host of the show, and today we have our, as our special guest Peter Engels, a renowned portrait artist. Uh, Peter is from Belgium, and but paints uh, personalities from all over the world and sells his paintings uh, all over the world. Peter, welcome to our show. Thanks you for having me. Thanks. Now, Peter, we're in your atelier uh, because we wanted to take a little bit of a closer up look on some of your paintings and your workspace. Uh, but at a later point in the show, we're going to go into the studio and actually take a look at in more detail at some of your uh, paintings uh, so, we'll, so that the audience can really see the breadth of the type of paintings that you're doing and Good. also the personalities. Uh, first of all, Peter, could you tell us a little bit about your background, how you uh, got into painting, when you started, and then eventually, how did you get into the portrait uh, painting side of business? Well, uh, I started very young, I think. Uh, at three, I, wa I was already painting on the walls, uh, and my parents were very angry, I, uh, they tell me. So a shaky start. Yeah. And then when I was uh, 16, I uh, made portraits uh, of all my friends and girlfriends and, and gave it to them. And then uh, I had my first exhibition, let's say I was uh, 24 then. And yes, that's, that was a, a good start because uh, I sold every, every one of the, of the paintings uh, at that moment. Great. Peter, you've been in the news a lot lately, uh, for specifically for two events. One was the recent uh, sale of a, a portrait of Richard Branson. Yeah. And uh, that actually just went to, recently went to auction. Uh, also, you uh, per basically did a painting of Grace Kelly, uh, Princess Grace of uh, Monaco. And that was also sold and actually bought by, the, uh, by Prince Albert, the Prince of Monaco, Himself. the son of uh, the late Princess Grace. True. Can you tell us a little bit about both of those events and how that came about? Well, recently uh, Richard Branson was in Antwerp and he uh, had an interview there. Um, he gave an interview and during the interview, uh, in, in front of an audience of 1,600 people, I made the painting uh, during, let's say, two and a half hours. I had to finish the painting and uh, I succeeded. Uh, then I donated the painting. Uh, the painting was put up for auction and was uh, sold for, uh, and the uh, proceeds went to um, Virgin Unite. Okay, Virgin Unite is, uh, is the charity arm of uh, yeah. Virgin. Yeah. Okay, and uh, that must have been a lot of pressure because how long does a portrait normally take you to do? Normally, let's say, I can make a portrait uh, every three weeks. But at the painting of uh, Richard Branson, I made it in, in, let's say, two and a half hours. That's incredible. Yeah. So I can imagine the pressure was pretty high. Yeah, now, was... let's talk about the painting of Princess Grace. That was actually purchased at also an auction but there were two bidders. Can you tell us a little bit about that uh, situation? Yeah, they asked me to, to donate a painting for a, a charity uh, auction. And um, I knew that the prince would be there. And I uh, didn't just give a painting, but made a, a painting specially for the auction. And uh, the, there was uh, Princess Grace, Grace Kelly, in the painting. And the prince uh, bought it. And there was an, a kind of a duel between the prince and the mayor of Aise, a little village in France. But he is a very powerful man, and uh, they b uh, bid up against each other, and, and it ended up to be a beautiful uh, auction bid. Now, there's another painting of yours. It was uh, a painting of Nelson Mandela uh, on the occasion of his 90th birthday. And that really got a lot of publicity in the sense that it was right at Times Square on the main billboard at Times Square. Yeah. At that time, there was uh, a Reuters, the big uh, media agency. They, um, they had their new billboard, the biggest billboard of the world in Times Square. And uh, they thought it was a good idea to start it, to kick it off with, uh, with, the, with the painting of uh, Nelson Mandela. Who are some of the other uh, uh, personalities that you've painted? Well, uh, I met and I painted uh, Roger Moore, 
the uh, 007 uh, right. actor. I met Karl Lagerfeld, the fashion icon. Um, I heard also Madonna. I painted Madonna. And also uh, President Obama. I did. Okay, so we'll get into a little bit more detail later about some of those uh, pictures uh, or paintings. Uh, I wanted to ask you more about your style. What separates you f apart from other portrait uh, artists? What separates me? Uh, I think I. the most important thing about my paintings that I think is very important, that is the 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 emotions in the in the portraits i like to show the emotions of the people i paint like this uh, the dalai lama dalai lama wow. and i think the most important are the eyes and the mouth and the nose and they have to speak they have to show emotion that's that's the most important thing now i notice your colors are uh, a little bit also unique than some of the other portraits i've seen can you uh, run us through that as well as the the style with the using the uh, palette knife. Mm -hmm. My colors they look uh, black and white, but uh, in fact it's all the colors combined. And uh, let's call it sepia. It's kind of brownish, kind of black and whitish. And um, I apply. I like to apply those with the palette knife, and the palette knife gives the possibility to take the paint and apply it to the canvas in a thick layer so that it's uh, it's a lot of texture and this gives the painting to my view it gives the painting a kind of a vintage look mm -hmm. and that's what i call them uh, a vintage the vintage portraits right okay and uh I, w you mentioned the dalai lama and mm -hmm. i were if you look into the eyes you can just see a happy face there. Is that something that uh, is unique to him, or do you, with most of your people, for example, the Richard Branson one, he's also smiling. Are most of your paintings uh, having people in a good light? Yeah, I, I like to paint them in one glorious moment. Uh, because if you, most of the time when, when people pause, they, after an hour or so, they tend to feel, uh, fall asleep. Or, and then uh, you don't see the, the light in their eyes, the, the vividness in the, in, the, in the painting, you don't see that. And uh, that's what I want to bring in a painting. Uh. Peter, if for some of our viewers who may themselves or may uh, have children who want to become an artist, or in particular a portrait artist, what advice would you have for someone wanting to do that? Well, in the beginning, it's it's very hard uh, to uh, earn your money as a, as a as a as an artist in general. But uh, after a while, uh, it becomes easier, and and even after when uh, exhibiting uh, internationally, it's 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 better. But I advise uh, to younger uh, artists to have a second. Let's say a second choice, uh, parallel yeah. job or career, so that they uh, maybe in, in in graphic design or architecture or fashion uh, that they can be creative, and in the same time keep working on on, on painting, on drawing, on uh, on your art. Okay. You know, one thing, you've been very active lately with some of these auctions or whatever, but you've also had some shows, in particular in the United States, uh, in uh, Miami. Can you tell us what some of your other plans are uh, for showing your paintings in the United States well, and other parts of the world? In Miami, um, that was during uh, Art Basel Miami. That's one of the most important shows uh, in the world. and. Um, but I, I like to go to uh, to uh, the important uh, art fairs in uh, New York and in LA and maybe San Francisco. Okay, so you will be continuing uh, with those uh, shows uh, so that uh, people in the United States, for example, can yeah. see that. But your paintings are basically sold all over the world. Yeah, true. Okay. I think I have paintings in every continent. All right. Well, now I think is a good moment for us to now move into the studio to actually see on a screen 
some of your other paintings, and then maybe we could hear a description uh, about not only the painting, but how you chose those particular paintings. Welcome to the second part of our show. We're now in the TV studio, and the idea here is to be able to take a look at each one of Peter Engel's uh, pictures, and Peter's going to give some commentary on uh, each picture. So we'll start with the first one, and it's called A Toast to the Sun. Uh, our viewers, uh, Peter, are going to be looking uh, be, uh, between us, but we're going to be looking at a screen so that you can see each picture. And A Toast to the Sun, maybe you could tell us a little bit about that. Uh. Well, I wanted to uh, paint the sun shining through the hairs and the glass, and so that we see the, 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 the ice cube in the glass. And we also see the sun on the lips and even see a reflection of the glass in the eyes. Hmm. Very good. And this is, in this particular case, you're using a model? Yes, this is a model. This is not a celebrity. It's uh, just to, to evoke the, 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 the atmosphere of the, the sun. Okay. And then we have the second picture, which is uh, Barack Obama. Uh, well known to the world, not just to Americans, uh, President Barack Obama. Can you tell us about this picture? Well, I wanted to, to paint his, uh, his features, his nice smile, his, uh, his uh, determined look. Uh, I liked it very much, with, the, with the, the stars and stripes. Okay, and then on the next picture, below? Yes, we have uh, a an, an writer, uh, a thriller writer from Europe, and he um, Actually, he, in one of his books, he told about one of my paintings, uh, and I called him, and I said, what a surprise, that's nice, and uh, we talked, and I painted his portrait, too, and uh, there, I, there was the, actually there was a little YouTube film of that, uh, okay. when artists meet. Interesting, and that's, of course, in your atelier? In the atelier. Uh, and then we have the next one, that is the Dalai Lama. Now, we talked about the Dalai Lama in your atelier, but uh, what strikes me about this is that you're actually painting it on a boat. Can you tell us a little bit about what was behind that? Yeah, well, in fact, uh, Dalai Lama, it means uh, teacher of the ocean, and, and that's why I found it uh, so interesting to paint him on a boat. Do you have a kind of a personal appreciation for the Dalai Lama? Yeah, I, I like the person who he is, and uh, I like his, his, his uh, face, his, his char characteristics. Well, do you often paint on boats, or is that... Uh... Uh, well, when I'm sailing, I, I, I always paint. So you, you basically will paint in anywhere, if you're on vacation anywhere. or yeah. in different countries or whatever. Very nice. Then we have, the next one is uh, Enzo Ferrari. Enzo Ferrari seemed to me a very vintage uh, personality. He died a long time ago, and uh, I painted him with the sunglasses, uh, 60s look. Uh, also in the painting, we, can, we cannot see that on the, on the photograph, but also in the painting there is a, a Ferrari Enzo, um, and, and I liked it to, to combine the person with the car. Hmm. Uh, the next one we have is the Grace Kelly uh, portrait. Now, we talked about this in your atelier, but, uh, and, uh, but here is actually a picture of you shaking hands with uh, Prince Albert, uh, Princess Grace's son. Yeah, that was just before the, uh, the auction where he bought, bought the painting. Right, beautiful. And then we'll have, see a close-up, actually, of the painting itself. And, and yeah. Beautiful. Wow, I love the contrast uh, between her face and the darkness in the, in the background, but that's actually uh, on most of your uh, paintings, where you're using kind of a dark background to the side. Yeah, yeah. All right, and uh, what's interesting here is, uh, Peter, you mentioned that the background is actually the view uh, of Monte Carlo taken from when she did the actual movie, It Takes a Thief. Yeah, to, to catch a thief. To catch a thief, to catch a okay, thief. to catch a thief. And it was a view from, from, from that movie onto the, the, the port of uh, Monaco, and I wanted to paint the, the, the port of Monaco in, at the age uh, in, the, in the 60s. Okay. That, that could be done from the movie from Hitchcock. I think it, uh, to our American uh, audience, it's interesting, Grace Kelly, not only that she's an American, but she grew up, was raised in, in Philadelphia. True. And uh, what I found interesting just personally was I used to vacation in Ocean City, New Jersey, and the family had a home there. 
and we used to pass by her house. So she really was an American uh, girl. The family still re re uh, actually remained in the U.S. while she uh, went over to Monaco and lived the rest of her life over there. Um, the next uh, painting we have is of Herman van Rompuy, uh, who is currently the president of the e European Union and the former uh, prime minister of Belgium. Can yeah. you tell us a little bit about why you decided to paint him? Well, when I paint the, the portrait of uh, Barack Obama, I certainly have to paint the portrait of the first European president, Evan van Rompuy. Okay. And then we have the next one is Hippocrates. Uh, Hippocrates. Now that's a little bit out of, uh, uh, actually different than the rest in that it's an ancient uh, character. Yeah, he lived uh, 400 years uh, before Christ uh, in, in ancient Greece. He was the father of medicine. And I wanted to, uh, I, I wanted to paint him uh, for someone who, who uh, likes his philosophy about food and medicine, that uh, food can be your medicine. And um, uh, In I, modern day terms, you are what you eat. That's it, that's right. it. And I studied a couple of uh, uh, sculptures that are left uh, from Hippocrates, and I made him alive. I painted him hair and eyes. And now, that is a painting that was actually commissioned uh, by, from a person that wanted it for his company. Yeah. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about that? Well, they uh, make uh, or they produce uh, bio-organic uh, products. And uh, in their philosophy, they say uh, food can be your medicine. And uh, that's what uh, Hippocrates said. So now this painting stands in their uh, office uh, now? Yeah. Okay. And next we have a, another well-known figure, uh, John F. Kennedy. Now, uh, maybe you can tell us a little bit about why you painted uh, him. There have been many paintings and many photographs of him. Yeah, he's an icon. And um, I, I thought I, I should, should put him in my Hall of Fame. Okay. And then the next uh, painting is a very beautiful woman who I believe is your wife, Karen. True. Uh, this is an older painting, and now we, we can see that, that uh, at that time I painted with a lot of colors, uh, with the brushes, now I paint with the palette knife. Um, and it's, it's different, but it's, it's the same painter. So this is really before your sepia uh, style? Yeah. Yeah. And, and before, is it also using knives, uh, palette knives? or No, no, no so, only okay, brushes. That, so yeah. that's another uh, difference uh, than your current uh, paintings. The next one, we have a picture of you in front of a painting of Karl Lagerfeld. Uh, maybe you can tell us a little bit about that, uh, the circumstances behind it. You actually met uh, Karl Lagerfeld. I did. I, uh, by accident, I met him in New York, at, in Soho, at his, his hotel. And um, I, uh, I walked up to him and I talked to him and uh, I, I, I thought he was the perfect person to paint in my kind of color scheme, the black and white dish. And uh, he's always black and white, black uh, sunglasses. And you can still see his eyes uh, through, the, uh, through the sunglasses. Yeah. That's interesting. Very nice. And I see your palette knife uh, in the it. picture. And then we have a close-up of uh, Karl Lagerfeld. And again, uh, your classic background, uh, to give a little more of contrast uh, to your main uh, figure. The next uh, person we see is Luciano Pavarotti. I painted him in Italy. I uh, couldn't get to him. Um, uh, the family uh, screened him off, and uh, uh, I painted him from photographs that I had. And uh, when I got back from Italy three weeks later, uh, I heard uh, he died, and that's why I couldn't uh, I couldn't meet him. Now, uh, is the is there a symbolism with the hat or with the yeah. ribbon around it? The name of the painting is uh, black ribbon on my hat, and uh, a black ribbon means uh, someone has deceased. Mm -hmm. Now you mentioned that you paint, uh, in this particular case, took a different, different photograph. So when you don't have a live subject, you're using actually more than one photograph, maybe a combination of different yeah, ones? Yeah, I do, I do. Uh, I like to paint uh, live. But if that is not possible, I uh, combine a lot of, uh, I take photos myself and I combine a lot of photos to come to one painting. Okay. 
And then we have another icon, and that's Madonna. Now it's a little bit different uh, seeing her in this uh, photo, in this uh, painting, because normally I, uh, I imagine her on a stage with a microphone. So can you tell us a little bit about the background behind this painting? I wanted to paint her like a person, not like a, a, some an, 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 an icon, like uh, a stage beast. Uh, I just wanted to person personalize her, and. Um, I think she is my Madonna. She is my... Your Mona Lisa. That's right. Beautiful. Very nice uh, painting. Okay, and next we have a picture of Times Square when they were actually presenting your painting of Mandela, which we refer to in the atelier. Uh, but let's just take a look in more detail. Uh, this is the, actually Times Square on the occasion of his 90th birthday. That's right. And it was on, tell us a little bit about the billboard and the circumstances. Well, uh, I made a painting. Uh, there was the, the birthday of uh, Nelson Mandela and uh, Reuters, the biggest uh, news agency, they had this uh, biggest uh, billboard on Times Square. And they even have you, you standing in front of uh, yeah, the, yeah, uh, the right. painting. So that's interesting. Okay. And if we look at the next picture of Michael Jackson, are you painting a picture of Michael Jackson? And I see beautiful palm trees. Uh, where are you painting that uh, That picture? was painted in Lombok. It's a little isle, uh, island next to Bali in Indonesia. Wow. So this just goes to show you you're painting really everywhere and at all times. Always. Excellent. And I, now we have a close-up of that uh, picture. And can you tell me a little bit about the expression on that you've uh, chosen to, to portray? It was right after his death, and uh, I wanted to paint the, the passion and the and the pain. In yeah, you can see it. Uh, it looks like he's a little bit uh, certainly in pain. Uh, and then we have the next uh, picture of that's the actual close-up of uh, Nelson Mandela. Is that the same one that's in the uh, that on the billboard? Yeah. Okay. Right. So for our viewers, just a close-up picture, a fantastic uh, view, very lifelike. Okay, and then next we have a photograph of you in front of the picture of Richard Branson, which we mentioned in the atelier. But th this is actually at the interview, uh, yeah. shortly after. Yeah. Uh, and I think we have another uh, close-up picture of one of your other Richard Branson uh, paintings. That's but the one. This is actually the one? The one I made. And, and before the interview, I made the, the, the view of the city, uh, the city of Antwerp, with the cathedral and the tower building. And then in the afternoon, when the, the actual uh, interview was there, I painted his face. And so you have beautiful Antwerp in the background, off of the River Schelde, and the cathedral in the background. And then uh, if we go up to actually the other one of Richard Branson, just wanted to show that also. Uh, you had done that uh, previously, yeah. Yeah, indeed. Okay, very lifelike. And now we go right to the interview that Richard Branson, where you painted uh, Richard Branson, and you can see what's interesting is not only you see, do you see the interview going on, you see the audience, but you see you standing off on the right-hand side yeah. uh, actually doing the painting. There was a, an audience of 1,600 people, press, uh, politicians, uh, business uh, men. Yeah. And as we mentioned earlier, uh, that's something where normally a portrait like that would might take uh, two to three weeks. You actually did this under yeah. three hours yeah. during the interview. So yeah. lots of pressure, lots of people looking, and the cameras also face towards your direction. Yeah. Very interesting. Okay, next we have a, an actor, uh, Robert De Niro. Robert De Niro. Um, why Robert De Niro and what is what? Why this particular pose? I like his character and uh, and I like the 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 way he's in this in this painting. He's he's holding the cigar. He's uh, he's taking a breath and you see the lighted cigar. So it's I, I like it. Very nice. And then we have the following uh, pictures are of two 007 agents. The first Roger Moore. That's your. Uh, that's the one you like the most. Don't no, you? <laughs> I have to say, really for me, the only real one was Sean Connery. Yeah, he was. Uh, everyone who came after uh, was just a secondary. But in any case, it is an excellent uh, painting. We'll go back to Roger Moore. And uh, you actually met Roger Moore. I re met Roger Moore in Denmark. And I was with a friend uh, in Denmark. And we were walking the beach. And uh, 
there was a man coming towards us, and, he's, and my friend said, look at that man in the black coat with the dog, uh, that's Roger Moore. And we talked with him, and, uh, and I decided to make his painting. Excellent. And then back to Sean Connery. One of my favorite actors, and certainly favorite, uh, most favorite 007 yeah. agent. And then uh, the following uh, picture is the Seafair in Miami, and that's actually on a yacht, a super yacht, where you uh, basically portrayed six of your paintings? Yeah, I think so. And, and e even uh, the Sean Connery was there. Uh, actually, I, I think I, uh, I, I finished the painting there on, uh, at the show. At, at the, the show. At the exhibition. Very nice. And that was just in this past uh, January, this yeah, year? Yeah, January, yeah. Okay. In Miami. Very nice. The next one is Sheikh Khalifa. Uh, and maybe you can tell us a little bit about him and also the circumstances uh, and what's in the painting. Yeah. We all know the, the largest, largest tower of the world for the time being, uh, the Khalifa. And uh, he, he is the, the president of the Emirates in the Middle the East. United Arab Emirates. Yeah. And... Um, uh, he has his palace in Abu Dhabi, and uh, when I was there, I uh, I thought I should should paint him, and I should I, I think in the background I should paint also paint the the new city they're building. And tell well, us a little bit about that. What is new in the city? Well, it's it's a, a totally a total concept of a new city, and with museums and and and. and golf courts, hotels, and in the painting we see at the far left, we see the new Guggenheim Museum, and uh, the, the dome next to the head is uh, a new Louvre. Like in Paris, like, in like Paris. A, really on that scale of a, uh, of a model. Yeah. Wow, yeah. very nice. Okay, then we have next uh, Steve Jobs, uh, certainly a man close to many of our hearts, uh, especially since I was an Apple user from the early days. Um, and I see that he's holding an apple. Yeah, there was a little girl and, and she said, is it a donut, daddy? <laughs> so. <laughs> so a very iconic uh, picture of him. And uh, then we have, after that, Steve McQueen. Steve now, McQueen. Now, we have a picture, uh, actually it's a picture of you painting a painting of uh, Steve McQueen. Can you tell us a little bit about why you chose Steve McQueen? Well, uh, there was someone who is passionate about cars, and he's uh, also restoring old cars. And he wanted a painting. Uh, he was very interested in my, my work. And uh, I thought I should paint him uh, a nice painting with, uh, let's say... Uh, a race car? Yeah. Okay. Race car. And... Is and is that the race car that he actually won? Uh, which w race did he win? Yeah, uh, in Le Mans. In Steve Le Mans. McQueen, Steve McQueen uh, raced, and there was a film of it too. Right, and he, and he starred in the film also, yeah. or not? Okay. So, in any case, so now, so looking at the picture there, you, you see, see the car in the see, background? You also see the, the, the sepia colors, but the bluish sepia colors. So you do also go into yeah. different shades and different colors uh, of the sepia uh, spectrum. Okay, then next we have a, uh, a picture that we actually saw in your atelier in the background when we were uh, at the first part of the interview, and that is of Toots Stillemans. Now, maybe you can tell us a little bit about uh, Toots Stillemans. I met him uh, at several occasions uh, at, uh, at concerts, and uh, I always took pictures. And he's a, he's a famous jazz mu musician, even in the world. And he played with all the big uh, jazz musicians. So, uh, and he's a Belgian. He's a Belgian. But he lives in New York. Lives in New York, yeah. very well known in the yeah. United States and around the world. Yeah. Uh, so it's the harmonica, he plays the guitar, guitar and the whistles too. And the whistles, yeah. yes, very well known. And the next picture, we have a series of pictures now, and I wanted to contrast this a little bit from the famous portraits, or, or portraits of famous people, to really what you do the other part of your time, and yeah. that's really commissions from private uh, persons or families. Uh, the first one being uh, from the family... There was a, a, a man who lives in Monaco, and he wanted to give his wife a, a beautiful painting. And he, his secretary called me, uh, he said he wanted to, to make an appointment, and they came over with the, with the Rolls Royce, of course, and, then, and he ordered the painting, and I 
made the portrait of them two and uh, offered it at uh, in at at a large party in Central Bay. Okay, and I see there's uh, the one thing I noticed is that uh, you're also using another shade of sepia. There's kind yeah. of a reddish uh, yeah. around the the for the lipstick. She always uh, wears red li lipstick, and he always r wears red glasses. Ah, okay. Uh, yeah. Oh, very nice. And then the next one is of another family? It's uh, the Serene family. Um, let's say 50% of, of the paintings I make are from celebrities and the other half is from uh, just people who want to give to, to their beloved ones. Okay. And you have another one right uh, on the next one is actually of, uh, of another family? Yeah, this is a, a picture taken in my atelier when I was working on a, on a painting um, commissioned by a, a man that was ter uh, terminally ill. Okay. And um, uh, 11 people uh, in, the, in the painting. Now I'm noticing that he's kind of looking uh, towards them. Yeah. That Is was there a meaning behind that? Yeah, that was done on purpose. Um, and, and after he died, symbolically, that, that looked nice. Uh, he was looking towards his family and uh, they were moved about the painting. So uh, do you basically divide your time, is it 50-50, between uh, portraits of famous people and uh, personally commissioned yeah. uh, things of individuals or families? Appro approximately. So Peter, if there's anyone that uh, would like to have a portrait done and would like to get in contact with you, how might they uh, get in contact with you? They can see my work at uh, exhibitions, or they can uh, just visit uh, the website. Uh, and that is? PeterEngels.eu. PeterEngels.eu. And of course, we'll have it on the board here for our viewers. Well, Peter, that concludes our show for today. We've had uh, a chance to be in your atelier, uh, as well as in our uh, television studio, and had a chance to really see a lot of the famous personalities that you paint with some commentary. Peter, thank you for being a guest on our show today. Thank you, John.